There are fewer superpipes in the world than there are bobsleigh tracks, which makes Cadronas a rarity in the Southern Hemisphere. Freshly cut ahead of the games, it was in pristine condition and waiting patiently to be shredded. Oh, this is a really important day for uh, our development pathway, for sure. Yeah, it's Continental Cup level, first comp of the season. It's been a big break since our competition season overseas. So it's a real good chance to shake off the dust and uh, get into it. It's a small field, but there's quite a few Olympians in there. So I'd say it's quite a high level for the level of competition. It was a week of variable weather with snow, wind and rain resulting in the finals being cancelled due to concerns around rider safety and that meant results would be taken from the qualifiers. So finding your flow quickly was key. The cream rose to the top and as anyone who knows their dairy will tell you, New Zealand has no shortage of cream. Ben Harrington was also in a pretty relaxed pre-comp mood. Feeling great. All the boys are thrown down. Yeah, yeah. The weather's holding out. Have the lease up. As the men's comp got underway, it was clear that the travelling American free skiers wanted their say in the contest. The best of them, Matt LeBau, laid down this beautiful run to claim third. Ben Harrington was clearly vibing on every hit and his runs were so powerful and smooth that it was as close to a certainty as you can get that he would podium. The only question was which of the top three places he would inhabit. In the end, he had to settle for second. After a disappointing Olympics, Gustav Legnavsky has been on an absolute tear. First, it was the Junior World Championships title. And now, on home snow, he claimed the Winter Games New Zealand title with a big technical run that no one could get close to. In the women's free ski, Team USA had a very strong presence. Four of the top six were American and they locked out the podium convincingly. Riley Jacobs took third with this solid run. Aware that amplitude is the hardest trick, Carly Margulies worked on her air miles and banked an impressive run. But it was Hannah Fallharbour who had that perfect blend of music and trick selection, height, style and technicality to take the win. It was a very strong performance from the Aspen local. In the women's snowboarding, Gayon Choi was the clear standout with a big, powerful run that put her quite literally head and shoulders above the rest of the pack. In the men's field, there was a lone Kiwi, Campbell Melville Ives, going up against the might of the Korean and Japanese pipe teams. Cam has been focusing on slope this winter, but he dusted off his frontside 900 on the first hit and then dropped his frontside 1080 on the third. It was a big run and good enough for third.
The raging onslaught of progression was felt hardest with the incredible run of 12-year-old Konosuke Murakami. He learned his back-to-back -back 1080s in the Northern Hemisphere spring and he put them to work on his first two hits. A brace of nines to finish meant he'd done enough to get a silver medal around his neck. But Che and Lee wasn't just in a different league. In fact, he was barely even on the same planet. He opened his account with a big front 12 and then flicked through his trick roller decks with a back nine, front 10, and cab seven to shut the pipe down. It was, despite the weather, an incredibly high level of riding that did justice to the immaculate Cadrona Superpipe.